So you want to know how the city of Jacksonville's market is doing currently. Well, you're just in luck because in this video, I'm going to be going over the market data for the city of Jacksonville for the month of April. And ultimately, if you're new to this channel, my name's Justin. I'm with the Rookie for Home team, and this is Everything Jacks Real Estate, where we talk about everything real estate related here in Jacksonville, Florida. So when we come back, we're going to dive into the amount of actives, pending, sold, days on market, pretty much everything you want to know as far as what we're seeing currently in the market here for the city of Jacksonville. So stay tuned because I'll be right back. So before we get started on this video though, don't forget to like it, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell at the bottom of this video so you get posts that uh, so you get notified when we post more content like this in the future. Also, any questions that you may have while we're over this video, you can drop a comment down in the comment section or in the description of this video is a link to my calendar where you can schedule time to press me face to face, have a phone call, have a Zoom call, or my phone number is also in the description. You can wish to you know, call me as well. So let's go ahead and get started on, on this market update report uh, in Alaska. However, because we have so much land here, there's a lot of areas that are more developed than others and vice versa. However, because it's a large area, we do have a lot of homes that do tend to sell. So don't take that into account as saying, oh, that means the market's really good. It could mean that, but also just do take into account that we are a big city as well from a land wise standpoint. So it's not surprising we may have a lot of homes selling. So first thing we look at if you ever watch these videos, we like to look at the pen to list ratio. And what this is to measure is to measure how many homes went under contract in the month of April in relation to the amount of homes that overall were either on the market or hit the market in April. And what we can see is we had 363 pendings in the month and we had 1,211 homes on the market at the end of the month. Overall though, that was 1,574 homes on the market. So when we look at the pending list ratio, it was about 23.1% of homes listed sold, or not sold, but under contract in April. This means that for really almost one out of every four homes in the market in April, or on the market in April, went under contract. So it's a very healthy market. You know, we've seen anywhere from, you know, 20 to as high as in the 30s during the COVID years. Um, so overall, being at 23.1% does show the market is mildly active. It is still a very healthy market here in Jacksonville, despite these higher rates that we're starting to see again, mixed with the fact that for the most part, prices haven't come down the way that a lot of buyers had foreseen or wanted to see. So when we take a closer look though, you will see the homes from two and $400,000 uh, did make up the majority of homes under contract because guess what? Jacksonville is a great first time home buyer uh, city. It's a great starter home city. And there's a lot of areas in Jacksonville that still have very affordable price points which is why the majority of homes that did go under contract were in that bracket uh, price point range. However, we also do have some higher end areas as well, which is shown when we look at the bracket that had the relatively largest amount of inventory uh, of homes listed, which was that four to $600,000 bracket. So even though the two to four made up the majority of homes going under contract, the majority of homes you know, on the market were actually in that four to $600,000 price point when we look at the most per bracket. We also saw here the median list price for all the homes that were on the market was $514,900, so roughly five fifty. dollars And that's actually about where we were at last month, so it's really just a continuing theme. What it shows us is we're not really seeing across the board for the city of Jackson as a whole increase in prices. Whereas like some areas, if you see my business house side video, you may see we saw an increase you know, month over month in the list price. Here, we're seeing it stay fairly stagnant, which does show us that interest rates and increased inventory are starting to have some effect on the market here. Next up, we're gonna look at the graph. In this graph, you may ask yourself is, you know, it measures the amount of homes for sale compared to the amount of homes that were under contract. And what we can see here is if you're looking anywhere from really up to about $800,000, you're going to have more options available to you compared to what's going under contract. It means that if you're a seller, you know, you're going to have more competition. So you might want to make sure your home's priced right or marketed properly or, you know, has a good condition because you know, it's not going to be as simple now as just putting a sign in the yard as it may have been a couple years ago and letting the buyers come to you. 
So ultimately, that's something that we like to look at because it does kind of show us, uh, you know, on, on a graph kind of format, the discrepancy between how many are still available compared to what's gone under contract at different price points. And if you're at higher price points, guess what? You got less options, but you also get less competition, as shown in the graph, because there's also less you know, homes under contract at those higher price points. Now we see here there was 2,251 contracts that closed in the last six months, which is a bump up from the previous month's video, which is not surprising because now we're starting to lose some of those winter months of data and we're starting to now replace it with spring months of data, which are going to be typically more popular. And it was during a time when rates actually were half a point to a point less than they were in those winter months. It'll be interesting though to see, as now that we're back up to those higher rates, how the data is starting to change the next couple months. For the homes that did sell in the last six months, for this area, the median sold price was 426,000 and change. Uh, so again, a lot of sales, but a lot of the homes that have sold are actually supporting a higher price point, which still puts us in that four or $600,000 bracket. We also saw here that it was 521 listings that failed to sell. For a big area like this, 521 is not uh, anything to really be too concerned about, but that is something we like to monitor because we don't want to see that necessarily go up too fast or too high. Uh, and if it goes down, it's great, but it also probably would mean that if it's going down, that prices are probably increasing and demand's probably increasing. So do take that in mind as well. And if you ever watch these videos, you know homes fail to sell for many different reasons. Uh, it could be a seller, could be a, a home condition, could be uh, the way the agent marketed it, could be many different factors. Could just be that the you know, seller didn't want to sell or that the job that they were going to relocate to never occurred. So there's no longer a need to sell. Next up, we're going to look at is the days on market. And with the days on market, we're going to start off with the amount of the days on market for the active homes still on the market. Now, these active homes, I mean, because we're looking at all of them, it's not surprising that the active listings uh, days on market was 37 days for that median uh, days range. Because we're looking at such a wide variety, there's gonna be a lot of homes that have been in the market for much longer, as well as a lot of homes that have been in the market for much less. So 37 days, that's a pretty you know healthy uh, time frame. It's less than we've seen in previous months. Uh, but it does mean that if you're a seller looking to sell your house, be prepared. It may take over a month to sell your house. It's not gonna be next day or next week, you know, it could, but for the most part, you have to take into account that it probably won't uh, moving forward for at least right now. So you have to make sure you understand it's gonna take time. However, we compare that to the sold properties uh, for the last six months. Again, we know 426,000 was that median sold price, but what was the median days on market? I'll tell you that, the median days on market was 26 days. So wow, right? If you sold your house, you're probably in the market a lot less than the homes that didn't sell. Reason for that, those homes were probably priced, you know, fairly well. They were probably in a fairly good condition, but more importantly, they probably had a seller if it was one of those two things or both or none. They probably had a seller that was very motivated or willing to negotiate with a buyer to get their home sold as soon as possible while still trying to get top dollar. And that allowed them to sell their homes much quicker than the homes that didn't sell. And so ultimately, you know, you look at that and you see, okay, four hundred twenty-six thousand dollars that median sold price compared to a median list price currently at five fifteen. It just goes to show that sellers are still trying to get more for their house. Uh, however, a lot of sellers may be taking a little bit less to get their home sold as soon as possible. So I'm just taking it down. Now the next thing we're going to look at is how does that compare to the last 30 days? And it's like, great, Justin, you, know, you just told me you know, that six month look back, so to speak. But what does that really do for me for you know, what happened in April? Well, no worries, because I got you right here. So the month of April, we actually saw that the median days on market was 14 days. So homes are selling even faster now. And guess what? That median sold price, $435,000. So despite rates going up, in the last 30 days, we've seen days on market go down for the ones that did sell and price going up for the ones that did sell compared to the last six months. So that's huge because ultimately it shows that there's a little bit of a, um, little bit of a uh, trend here that's the opposite of what you would expect. 
Now that could be an anomaly, which we'll see in future, you know, future videos as we start to continue to get more data throughout the year. But it does support that if that a lot of these homes in the market are probably in really good condition, so buyers are willing to be quicker on them and still give a very good price on it because the condition or location match up to what the buyer is looking for. That's one of the biggest thing is when it comes to buying or selling a house, you know, it all comes down to that house is there is that is the location of the house, the price of the house, and the condition of the house. Ultimately, for a lot of buyers, if you get two of those three, you're winning. You know, but ultimately, if you're able to get all three, that's great. But really, typically, like you can get location and condition, you maybe won't pay with the higher price, which could be shown here with this data. So this is something to monitor as we go in the future months. Now the median list of sales ratio for the area was 97.2%. That just means that for every house selling, sellers are getting a little bit over 97% of their asking price. Ultimately, where you can really look at that is a lot of times sellers, especially for or buyers, especially for some home buyers in this market, need closing cost concessions. Well, typically, you know, for years it was always the mindset was, you know, a seller could give 3% towards the purchase price to a buyer. Uh, for closing cost concessions or nowadays rate buy downs. Well, guess what? What is what's 100% minus 3%? 97%. And we're saying 97.2. So there's where that difference comes from, and that's probably what we're seeing across the board. Sometimes that could be, you know, again a reduction in price as well. But typically, that's just showing us that sellers are willing to negotiate, and they're probably just as motivated as the buyers in today's market, if not more motivated to sell. We also, the, the assortment rate for the area was 3.2 months for the last six months. So again, that just means if no new homes hit the market, you know, we'd be out of homes to sell in a little over three months. Uh, it does mean it's still a seller's market, but it also means that for you as a buyer, you do have the ability to have some more options. Um, ultimately, if we ever get to six months of inventory, then it would switch over to a buyer's market where if you're a buyer, probably you have some fun with it, but do keep in mind. What could a buyer's market come with? Potentially high rates. Um, you know, there's some other economic factors that you know you may have to ask yourself: Is it really worth it? But for now, 3.2 months is uh, very good for for sellers, very good for buyers. Probably better than for buyers now than sellers, because sellers are still kind of used to those you know under two months of inventory that we saw a couple years ago. But sellers are starting to adapt, starting to get more accustomed to it, which has been good for buyers as well to get some stuff such as closing costs from the, from the seller or price reductions. These are just showing us the sold price, median sold price, mean days on market for the last six months. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at it. Ultimately, this data does ship the support that we're seeing prices increase some and we're seeing days on market go down some, uh, as we've already kind of referenced. And then lastly, we're going to look at this table here. In this table, it's going to kind of show us at different price brackets what the assortment rate is to really kind of dial it in because we know 3.2 months is for the whole area but what is it at different price points what we can see here is if you're buying under 400,000, it's a very heavy seller's market you're going to have a lot of competition you're going to have to be willing to maybe you know give up on negotiating because there's just not as many possibility of um, as many homes to choose from to go after now if you're looking between 400,000 and 1.4 well guess what you're in some luck. You, you're not in as much of a seller's market, but it still is a little bit of a seller's market. So you can negotiate, but you can't negotiate too hard or else, guess what? Some may take it from you. Now, moving on from there, if you're looking between 1.4 million up to about 2 million, now you're in more of that equilibrium market slash buyer's market where you, know, you will have more options. You can negotiate without having to worry about someone's taking it from you, but there's still a chance that could still happen. So you have to be a little careful. Now, if you're looking at pretty much anything over 2.2 million, it's more, you know, pick what you want and negotiate how hard you want and, you know, see what a seller's willing to do. You know, obviously a seller is always going to have kind of their, their stopping point as well, but it does show us that there's a lot more options for you as a buyer at those higher price points. And that's going to wrap up the video. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below, or as I mentioned in the description is a link to my calendar to be able to reach out to me you know, or call me, feel free to just check out the description. You'll find all of it there. And I'd love to always talk, you know, talk real estate, talk anything about Jacksonville. I mean, shoot, if you want to talk about Jaguars, you know, here or the Iceman or, you know, what's there to do in Jacksonville, again, I'm your guy. And so as always, like this video, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can notify for more content like this in the future. And I will see you guys next month on the next Market Day video for Jacksonville. Until next time.